happy new day happy holiday happy celebration happy christmas in advance so my beloved brother and sister is me your friend your brother i have come your way again today i have come with another new tidings i have come with another fresh word from almighty god so my beloved brother and sister i'm here today not of my power not of myself but i am here by the grace of god so i am here to bring the gospel to you to come and bless you with the word of god so my beloved brother and sister today is under great day the lord have created we are glad and we are rejoicing in it we see this day is not by our power it's not because we are too good because we are too righteous it's by god's grace and his mercy towards us so my beloved brother and sister we don't have anything to give back to god for us to thank him and for us to bless you his name and for us to continue to hear from him and for for us to continue to collect to draw from him so that is why my beloved brother and sister is very important that all of us we come together to come and fellowship we come together to hear from his throne of his grace so my beloved brother and, brother and sister i'm here it's not because i'm too good not because i'm better than you it's not because i'm wiser than you it's not because i'm righteous than you i'm just here as a servant of god so god will use me just to pass a message through me to you so my beloved brother and sister before i will start i would like to invite all my friends as i invite you invite somebody else invite your friends your family member your enemy mm -hmm. invite everybody to come and listen to the word of god so as i invite you invite somebody else share this program with with somebody go to your timeline just press share so that another person else can get the notification another person else can get the message you don't know who you are going to bless with this message all of us we are the, we, all of us we are evangelists of god if this is a way for you to do your evangelist work almighty god will bless you also so that the hand that you use to share the word of god you will never use it to share sickness you will never use this to share disease so share this word of god and when you share somebody else receive and he hear it and he give his life to God and the life has turned around. The glory will be for God, but the blessing will be for you. So my beloved brother and sister, invite one another. And as you do so, Almighty God will bless you in Jesus' name. Worship, worship. 
Okay, my beloved brother and sister, I've invited all my friends. As I said before, if I invite you, invite somebody else, share this program with somebody, tag your friends, tag your family members, go to your timeline, your spread share, let the message go viral, and let so many other people see receive the notification. By you doing me, by you doing this, you are not doing me favor. You are not doing you are not doing my work. You are not doing me anything. You are you doing the work of your father. So my beloved brother and sister, let's invite one another. Let's share this program with one another. Let's tag our friends to come and hear from his throne of his grace. So I just do that almighty God will bless you in Jesus' name. So my beloved brother and sister, before we start, we like to commend this service unto God and let God take absolute control so that he will speak to us. Before we gather, know God has already seated down the stream waiting for us. So my beloved brother and sister, let Jesus just be in the mood of praying and let's commit the service unto God. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, we worship you. We we'll give you the honor, we we'll give you the glory. Lord, we thank you for keeping us alive. We thank you for making us to see this. this. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us from the month of January to this month of December. Lord, you are, you that started it, we know you always complete it. We thank you for your mighty hand upon our life, upon our family, in the mighty name of Jesus. So many people wish to see these days, but today they are no more. It's not because we are better than those people. It's not because we are wiser than those people. But by your mercy towards us, O oh Lord, but we say, may your name be glorified, may your name be exalted forever and ever in the mighty name of Jesus. But by the remaining days of this year, O oh Lord, but by, you will never see our end in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. But we will cross and we will see 2019 with peace and joy and with fulfillment in our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. So that at the end of it, O oh Lord, we shall give you back all the glory and all the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, your children, they have gathered today to hear from you, Lord, Baba, not to hear from me, O God. Baba, as they gather today, Baba, pass your message to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba, that word that will revive their soul, that word that will revive their spirit, O God. Baba, let the Holy Spirit that you give unto them, let him minister the word into their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, every minute that we spend on this platform, every minute and every second listening to you, God, but I will not be a waste one in the mighty name of Jesus. But at the end of it, O oh Lord, only, only your name shall be glorified, only your name shall be exalted forever and ever in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, come and speak to us, O oh God, but come and teach us, O oh God. But come and teach us that word you designed for your children today, O oh Lord. Baba, pass it through me in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba, any word that is not from you, O oh Lord, Baba, I will not speak it to them, O oh God. Baba, any word that will not that will not move their spirit, any word that will not have value to their life, any word that will not give them hope and not will not give them faith. Baba, those words will not come out from me in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba, it's only word that you design for them, only word that you want them to hear. That is all they will hear today in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba, as they hear this word, oh Lord, Baba, if anyone is sick, oh Lord, Baba, their body will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba, then hear this word, oh Lord, if anyone is losing hope before, oh Lord, he will know that you have done it all for him or her in the mighty name of Jesus. Ashes of glory, Baba, you, you that started it, you will always complete it in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba, as we, as I said, so shall live in the mighty name of Jesus, mm -hmm. because it's written that anyone the son of man is set free, and is free indeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba, your children, they are free and they are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Ashes of glory, Baba, we thank you, Lord, we worship you, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory. Baba, at the end of it, O oh Lord, Baba, testimony, your children have testified to your good name in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory, in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen and Amen. 
so my beloved brother and sister you have already committed the service unto god by the grace of god our topic today is your your your, your blessing can be denied it can be delayed your blessing can be denied but it can never be denied because sometimes why that come with this topic because sometimes we we, we because we, things is not going faster because things is not going the way we want it to go we start blaming ourselves we start giving one complaint to another we start believing wrongly we start thinking that maybe somebody else that is after us or somebody else that is that is that is, is trying to pull us back but sometimes most of all these things is not a spiritual thing it's not, it's not because somebody is running after you, just because God wants you to learn a lesson or God wants you to, to learn something from that from that delay. God wants you to learn something from that from, from that delay. That is why it's like a thing is not moving the way you want it to move. Because if it moves the way you want it to move, sometimes it might be destruction. Sometimes it might be it might be disastrous for, 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 for you. Sometimes there are some certain things you will get in the hurry. Sometimes you wish you never had that thing. So my beloved brother and sister, that is the message I bring to you today. I bring a message of encouragement for you to know that don't be thinking that because just be, be still be believing in God. Anything you believe God for, just be believing in God. Even though sometimes it might become so, it might become so like, so fed us, like so frustrated. You may become so frustrated, it doesn't mean, but just think, continue believing God. If you want to pour your heart, if you want to complete anything you want to do, just take it back to God. You don't need to go, you don't need to seek somebody else. You don't need to go for somebody try to prophesy to your life. You don't need any of these things. But sometimes if you can share with maybe you lose somebody and you know that person can give you encouragement, that person can encourage you, it can give you a word of advice. Sometimes when something is so rough for you, also you can go to go and talk to a person about it. But it's not by because you are going so that maybe that person will encourage you. Because as a Christian, we are there to encourage one another. To give you word that will, that will give you hope. Not to give you word that will make you to feel lesser than human beings. Or to make you to feel start to condemn yourself. Or make you to feel like there is no hope for you anymore. So my beloved brother, that's where I come with this topic that your 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 blessing it may be delayed, but it can never be denied. There is nobody can there is nobody can stop it. There is nobody can stop it that if somebody the person will say this thing will not move forward. No, it will always move forward because where God has said so, it must surely be anything that God has said. It must surely be no matter what. It may look like it will not come to pass, but it will always come to pass because the one God speaks is always capable of bringing that word into fulfillment. The problem we have sometimes, the, the Babalawo pastor that we have in Nigeria, they speak on their own and they say, God said, at the end of the day, it's only those ones that can ever come true. But anyone that God speaks, it will always come true. So my beloved brother and sister, let's go to the Bible and let's go and see what is scriptural for us today. So our first Bible reading, it will go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 5. We will start from verse My beloved brother and sisters, we are all coming. I welcome all of you to the platform. Share this message with somebody. Make this message go viral. Viral and uh, just go to go to your timeline. Share, 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 share with your friend. Let the message go viral. So let every other person will receive the notification. So as you do that, Almighty God will bless you. I love you. I welcome all of you. And every minute and every second you spend listening to the word of God. It must be a blessing for you and you must testify for what God has done for you. It's not me that I'm going to do it. It's for you just to believe in God. Trust in Him. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop your destiny. Nobody can stop your life not to shine. You just only need to know the truth and the truth will always make you free. 
Exodus 5 verse 1. Yeah. And afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus, thus, thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Verse 2. Mm. Hmm? Yeah. Verse 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know mm. not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. Praise the Lord. You see, a, two weeks ago, I shared a passage that everybody that left in the land of Egypt, there was no feeble person amongst the tribe, according to the, 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 the word of God, Psalm 105. You know, but before that time, there was a time like this. Before that time, there was a time like this, a time, the first time that God said, God speak to Moses, to go and tell pharaoh to allow his people go and moses were Aaron. they went to the king palace they they, go, they 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 went to the king palace to go and meet pharaoh that says the lord let my people god said let the israelite go let my people go so they will worship me in the wilderness and pharaoh respond who is the lord who is the lord that i will let the israelite go I will know who is the Lord. I don't know him. I will not listen to his voice. Who is the Lord? I cannot let the people go. Sometimes when we tell the story of the Bible, sometimes we just look at it, we just like feel like maybe as God just said it today, it happened the next day. No. But because most of the time, this thing take time also. For them to learn, don't just God don't just speak it that moment. Maybe you speak it today and the next day just happen. No. It must take time. That is why you can see right now that now God now move. That is because he speak to 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 because he speak to Moses and Moses went to to his, to, to to Pharaoh to go and tell them to go and tell Pharaoh that let God say let my people go so that they will worship me in wilderness. And Pharaoh respond, "Who is the Lord that I will allow Israel to go? I will not allow it. I will not hear the voice of God." So let's drop down because of time and let's see the response. Let's see what Pharaoh do, do here. Verse 6. Yeah. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the tax masters of the people and their officers, saying, Verse 7. Mm. Yes? Eh? Yeah. Ye shall no more give the people swift to make bricks as ye for. Let them go and gather swift for themselves. Verse 8. Praise the Lord. Now, Pharaoh now said to the slave and he said to his people that right now you will not, you will not give the Israelites bricks again to make. There is the, I would like to put it like, for instance, people that is maybe uh, like a uh, bricklayer. Bricklayer, maybe you will not give them maybe that boss or the 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 or the smith for them to miss anymore. So they will not go to go and look for their own. They will go and look for their own so that you will not give them because why? Just it can make the world that the the work become so hard for them because why? Because now fail because. Moses said to him that he should let Israel go. For him not to let Israel go, he increased the work. He doubled the work. He made the work become so heavy for them. It's like before they are, they are, they are, they are bringing smith for you. They are bringing sand for you. Right now, now, he's telling them that they should not bring smith for you anymore. They should not bring sand. For you anymore you should go to go and face your own son by yourself to go and look for your own by yourself let's continue reading verse 8 verse 8 and the tale of the bricks which they did make therefore ye shall lay upon them ye shall not diminish Diminish out, diminish out thereof, for they be, de, 
for they be thine. Therefore, they sit saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Verse 9. Let, let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor daring, and let them not regret, regret vain word. Praise the Lord. Dear Nam, what the, the verse 8 and verse 9 is trying to explain to us that now you should give them more work. Mm -hmm. You should give them more work to do. You must that is you you, you must give them more but that is more work to do. And as you give them more work to you should lay more body upon them. And you should not reduce the number. You should not reduce the the the, the breaks they have been making. You should not reduce it. You should you still you still continue make them to make the the, the, the same amount. Now you are not giving giving them anything anymore. Now you stop Egyptian for their uh, taskmaster to give them the help that made the work so easy for them to do. Now he stop those things. He stop those help. He stop those help. So that they should go by themselves to go and look for those things to do. They go and look the they go and look for the bridge by themselves for them to come and do it. So before they are bringing the bridge for them to use to 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 mold because the work of bridge is like those days like we like maybe we in Nigeria we know the way they use all those red sand to build us is just something like that. So what am I trying to pass out on this message is because sometimes. When you when, when something when something want when good thing want to happen in your life, sometimes some obstruction might come, some difficulty might come. It might it, it might seem like there is no hope anymore. Now this one is there is these people. Now it's like what God is like God has put in more tasks, more pain upon them. Because because Moses speak to Pharaoh. That is what bring most of all these difficult things to their life. Let's continue reading. Verse 19. Yeah. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in they were in evil. Cast after it was said, Ye shall not diminish out diminish out from your bricks of your daily tax praise the lord now they know now the people the is the the israelite now they know that they are not in, in there is in more problem there is bigger problem bigger work that they know that this suffering now is more heavier than what they used to pass what they are used to deal with before because they know that now they are not more evil not more strong and because right now they said to them that you we will not cut the number of this breeze that you used to make we will not bring it down because we are not giving you the the material to do it again then we will bring it down no you will still meet up with your daily task if for instance when they are giving you bricks to do it you as you are doing hundred pieces many you will still continue to do these hundred pieces so the time that you you you're supposed to use the the time that you're supposed to use to do the work is that time they will send you out is that time you will go out to go and look for the bricks for instance you're supposed to bring it before where you are bring it for you to bring the the material for you to work now you have to go maybe you living in Antwerp now you need to go to Brussels to go and get you need to go to gain so you need to do it now by yourself and the daily number you must meet up with the daily number you must meet up with the daily number continue reading verse 20 and they met moses and aaron who stood in the way as they came from as they came forth from Pharaoh, 21, and they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge, because you have made our Savior to be hard run. You are making us to smell like that. In the eyes of Pharaoh yeah. and in the eyes of his servants. 
to put a sword in their hands to slay us. Praise the Lord. Now they meet Moses when they were coming out from the from the king's palace or from their task place. They were, they meet Moses on an arrow, and they said to Moses and arrow that God will judge you. God will punish you for making us smell before our slave, our uh, taskmaster. You are putting sword for to their hand to slave, to slave us, to kill us. It's just like maybe I'm, I'm it's just like maybe I'm just preaching the word of God to you now, or any, maybe any of your church, maybe your pastor. This we a trouble consultant. This we a men of God fear. This we people fear because why they don't want to wait upon the Lord anymore. It's like now I tell you that for instance, go and take holy communion. And something doing you, you just say go and take holy communion. Or maybe you come to my platform, you come and listen to me. I say, okay, take holy communion for your head. At the end of the day, you take this holy communion. Maybe you be you you fall sick, you become sick. What is the next thing you will do? You will start insulting. You will start insulting me. At this person is a, he is not a believer. This person is not a Christian. He has told us something, and now I have done it. Now I have more problem now i have more trouble now more sickness no when before i did it my family was well my family was okay since i partake in that holy communion now my my, my families now they are they are falling sick you begin to complain you begin to insult the person the person that bring the prophecy and the person that tell you to do it. this is what happened to moses here now they look upon moses they begin to insult moses because it's like moses has placed burden upon them it's like Moses has placed a burden upon them. But this is just the word of the Lord. This is just the word of, of God. So sometimes that is how something, so, you know, some situation, it might become so rough. It might become so terrible. It might become so terrible. You might begin to ask yourself a question. M Moses begin to ask himself a question. Begin to think, ah, what is happening right now? But these the same people, but after later on, there was no feeble person among the tribe. They become strong, they become heavy. But before that time, before that blessing, before that restoration, before all those things ever, there was a time like this. So God, He happened to them, He happened to them at that time. God still wants us to that it can happen to us in this time. Because those sickness, those Egyptian. A uh, taskmaster and everything that I be seeing. Oh, then it was physical. Now it's not spiritual. That's why the scriptures say, I will not put any plain or any sickness of Egypt upon you. So all those sickness today, like headache, cancer, tumor in the stomach, all these kind of things. So all those are the Egyptian enemy. So sometimes when, when, when prophecy comes, sometimes when you are passing through so difficult things, sometimes a time that is being like, maybe that thing want to solve. But it becomes the, the time that will be more so terrible. Sometimes like when you are walking in the field. Sometimes when that work want to feed, it's like that work it becomes so difficult. You, it becomes so like the work is not slow. So this is what happened to them. So before they were ever delivered, there was a time like this. The time of pain. The time the work becomes so hard. Because God want them to lay something out of it sometimes when trouble come sometimes when we are when we are passing through difficulty it's not because god has left left us it's not because god has neglect us no it's because maybe god wants us to know something to learn something so that we, it might be a blessing to other person so that when somebody is passing that the same hardship tomorrow you know the way to advise him It's always the right time that God brings a blessing to you. It's like when, when, when you don't know what to do with money, maybe if God, like what our pastor said on Sunday, like if God promised to give you 10 million naira for instance in next 10 years, but today it can start by giving you 100,000. So through that 100,000, we use it to start to build you up so that you might know the value by the time you get the full money so that you can use it at the end of the day, he will get the, he will always get the glory. You might receive the money, you, you so that you may know how to use to put the kingdom of God, so that you know the weight is not just for you. It's not for you to take 
charge of another person for it's not for you to use to oppress another person it's for you to use it to advance the kingdom of god to use it to bless one another so that is why when the prophecy comes, the things become so hard become so difficult for them so it doesn't mean that you must go to one to one uh, one babala or you must go to one person to begin to try to buy your way out the problem with nigeria we have to the africa they want to buy their way out they, they will not begin to look for who where they want where they can give a seat to so just to run from that situation just or just to run from that thing because they don't want to face it but any trouble you face it builds you up it's a blessing so all these things that happen to israel like is for for their benefit it's not because god left and not because moses bring a wrong prophecy moses bring a right prophecy moses bring right word but god was preparing them because god need to prepare them for the blessing ahead so that is why all these things come this time come that is why they need to face all these things but when they face it they were ready that they were insulting moses because they believe that moses have come to make their work so difficult so that to make them appear before pharaoh as a bad person so like because they don't have what to do now they are not gossiping around so now because of that pharaoh now see that opportunity now used to enslave them more and more lay more work upon them Praise the Lord, somebody. Let's continue with it. Yeah. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore has, has thou so evil introducing these people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? 23. For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in the in the name, he has done evil to these people. Neither has thou delivered delivered them, delivered our people at all. Praise the Lord. Now you can see if anything happened to you, if anything go wrong, always go back to God. That's what Moses do here. Moses go back to God. Go, God, God, what is happening? You send me, but now since you send me to these people, it's like now it's like I brought him more evil upon these people. Now you didn't deliver them. Now the, the problem become more now. Pharaoh now see opportunity to do more harm to these people, to do more evil to these people. What is happening? He go back to God. He went to the Lord to go and inquire from God, to go and ask God question. That is what you're supposed to do. If you want to complain, complain to the Lord. If you want to do it, you always go back to God. Go and ask him questions. Go and ask God, God, where is this thing? It's like this. You send me this message. You give me this prophecy. What is happening? What is happening? Because every it's that God did because it's it's God, I heard your voice. I see the bunny bush. I see the one you see for, for the leprosy. You you tell me to shoot candy inside my body and bring it out and put it back it was it so everything is try to to reset everything again begin to ask god that is what you, you you're supposed to do you don't need to ask anybody any question you don't need to talk to anybody if you want to complain complain to the lord go back to the go back to god go and ask him what is happening what is the problem he don't find who who to blame who is responsible is ancestors is the father cause or is the mother cause you don't need to look for who just go back to go and ask god this is what moses do in, in in this passage he went back to god to go and ask him questions to go and talk to him to go and talk to him so my beloved brother and sister what am i using this message to pass to you if god laid anything into your heart if you are doing anything don't give up even though you are doing it now you are not seeing the result always know that tomorrow will always be a better day always know that god has said it always know that god has already paid for you always know that christ has took strife for you even though you are passing through sickness it's just like uh, when jesus talked about the the the, the sheep falling into a pit 
when you have any sickness in your body, any, any, anything, any disease, don't condemn yourself. Don't begin to fear how, who, who, who. Don't look for who to blame. Don't look for who to blame. When you discover, you know that you have so 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 sickness is like all those is Egyptian enemy. All you need to do, you rebuke it. When you rebuke it, you just believe that it is, it is done. You go to hospital, go and get yourself treated. Today, why why Nigeria always speak about evil sickness? They say evil because the society is not well taken care of. That is why, through mal, through through because of the environment. If the environment is well taken care of, you can all those may be this uh, somebody go to hospital uh, the, the next day it, uh, you will hear a bad news that that person is already dead or somebody maybe somebody a, a woman went to to the hospital to go and deliver at the end of the day maybe will not come back it's because the facility is not working it's not because the whole problem not because the witches are no in europe is in europe it is not that is, sometimes it might happen but it's not that common. Maybe somebody, since I've been here, I never heard any Nigeria person, any black person went to the hospital to go and deliver at the end of the day, not make it alive. No, people always come back alive with their, with, with their, with their children, with their child. They come out and they testify. It's because everything is being put in place. So now let all of, all of us, let us open our eyes. Let's open our brain. Let's open our eyes to see the truth. All these things is not because spiritual problem, not because any enemy. No, we live in Euros in years. We we can we can we, we can differentiate this thing. We can just know it's, it's just a common sense. That's why the where scripture say, my people is perishing. Why? Well, because of lack of knowledge. It's not spiritual. It's not no. It's because things is not keep way the way it's supposed to be. Some people is a battle for sick. But when you when you are God has already made the provision, where God has already give people idea to be doctor to be nurse to take care of that to that to that sickness. But if it come to that one that they cannot do it, they, they, they don't know how to do it. They cannot see the sickness because they have been limited. But God is not be limited. God will step in. God will step in. He will take care of that situation. He will take care of that sickness. He will take care of that disease. Anything you are passing through, even though human beings say there is no hope, God always says there is hope. He said because if, with man, man is not possible. But with God, all things are possible because He is the King of kings and He is the Lord of lords. He know it all. He know it all. So my beloved brother and sister, believe in God. Trust in Him. The, let's see the response of God. When Moses talked to God, you can see God respond. Let's see the, the, the next passage, uh, verse 1 there. Exodus chapter 6, verse 1. Let's see the way God responded. God always responds when you go back to God asking. It's always respond. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, the response. Exodus 6, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shall thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Praise the Lord. Now you can see, now God now talk to Moses. So go on, go on, go on, go on, talk to Pharaoh. This is what I will do with force. There is with force. Pharaoh will let them go. And Pharaoh will force them out of this of his land. This is a person that don't, he don't want to live there. But God is saying, I will, Pharaoh now, I will make him, he will force them out. With a strong hand, he will force them out of their, for, for, from his own land. He will tell them, go, 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 I don't need you. But even when God speaks this word, he don't just speak it today and the next day it happens. No, it should take a time. I think they 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 they, they, they plan they, they went into his temple. So why God was dealing with them, God was dealing with their enemy, and God was also teaching them a lesson so that they would know that He's Almighty God. 
everything that Pharaoh believed, everything the Egyptians believe on, God make those things become their nightmare so that the people, his children also, they will see it. So they will let they will know that there is nothing God cannot do. They believe in, in song. God make in, in, in daylight make the, the old land become darkness. Then believing in fraud, then worship frog, also the same thing. God make the city come house of frog everywhere. Because where God is want he, he want them to know. So God will dealing with the with their enemy so that the his children also then they are they can see, they can have faith, they can know that what God is capable of doing, anything that God said he would do, he will always do. So let not you see the story of Bible that maybe he just speak it yesterday, he speak it today, next day happened. No, it took a time. There is a time. God will always prepare them. So it still to maybe yeah, you can see take some years before after last lap, before they were forced us from the land of Egypt. And then when, when they leave the land of Egypt, you could see most of them that insult Mo, all those elders that insult Moses. When they see they were not strong and heady, they will go and go back to Moses. Moses, we are not strong. Sorry for what I said to you the last time. Moses was saying there is no problem. I know. There is always a time like that for us to grieve. There is always a time like that. But it doesn't mean because you grieve in your heart. Because there is, there is always a battle. Even though Christ himself know that. That is why he himself say if it is possible, I will say this cup to pass over me. That is a human because it's a full 100% human being. So anything you want to complain, if you want to ask any question, you go back to the Lord. And sometimes don't think because as a, 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 as a where the problem always come, where all this Nigerian native doctor pastor deceive us, is they, they are trying to make us to understand that then they are saved then they are saved they are passed through the through this way through this hardship or through difficult time then because of that there is no way anything can happen there is no way god cannot answer that they cannot pass through hardship as a prophet because they are prophet because they are pastor they cannot pass through any temptation there is a lie temptation is made for everybody temptation is made for everybody that is where when 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 you read that passage, when Moses I tried to go when Moses went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh even flocked Moses and Aaron. Moses is a prophet. Aaron is, Aaron is the first high priest. Pharaoh flogged them. So it doesn't mean because this person is a pastor, this person is a bishop, this person is a pope, or this person is a whatever. Us all of us we are human. Even Christ passed through the suffering so you yourself you are you also pass through it you take it with patience you take it with hope you take it with love when you have faith you believe that it will always be a turn out turn around for you that god we can never let you down because it's written that if you believe in me i will never i will never put you into shame god will never put you into shame he, he, he will not do it but the problem we always want God to do it in our own timetable, our own time. When God don't do it in our own time, we say no, God is not existing anymore. God is failing. God then we begin to look for shortcut. They want to sow all the seed. We want to give all the tide. We want just to do something just to get out from that situation. We take it patiently. This is what I want you to know. Always hope. Always know that your father is always there. He can never leave you alone. He will never deny you. He will never forsake you. Praise the Lord, somebody. Let's go also to the book of Genesis to go and look also to the story of Abraham also. Then we, also you will know that there is no way, even though you are a prophet, you are a happy, or you are anybody, when things happen, one way or the other, things don't just manifest that day, that day. It don't just start today and the next day will all come to pass. No. God needs to prepare you. You need to pass through. Those hardships you pass through, devil might bring it, enemy might bring it, but God will use it for your advantage. God will use it to prepare you for your better tomorrow. That's how the things of God work. 
So let's read the, the book of Genesis 14, verse 18. Let's see the story also of Abraham. Genesis 14:18. And Mehizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. Verse 19. Praise the Lord. Yeah, this Mekisede is the God High Priest, the King of Salem. Now that is not Jerusalem. And what did he respond with Abraham? He respond from with Abraham. They respond with bread and wine, signify holy communion. That's what he meant. So God always, when you meet God, God always offers something to you. God always giving you something. God is not waiting for you to give him. He wants to give you first. So who is our high priest today? It's not, it's not the Leviticus. No. Our high priest today is Mekisede. is the type of our Lord Jesus Christ. The priest of Most High God. So it's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's, our, he's the high priest. He's our high priest. Not order of uh, Leviticus high priest. No. The order of Mekisede. But he met Abraham and he gave Abraham bread and wine, which is the Holy Communion. Let's read verse 20 because of time. 20. No, no, it's 20. Okay, 20. And blessed be the most high God, which has delivered thy enemy into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Praise the Lord. See, now you can see, say, God bless the God that deliver your enemy into your hand. And Abraham, now before Abraham had respond, God has already given him something. Now he respond with tithe. Give him Megizede. Oh, at this time, what, what Abraham were looking for? Abraham were looking for fruit of the womb. So he want healing for his wife. He want God to bless his wife. He want, he want have an heir to his throne. So he was looking for healing. He was looking for blessing. But it doesn't mean because Abraham gave all this thing to God that everything was finished. Every, every, the next day, everything beyond begin to start to manifest. No. It still take time. It still took a time. It still take time for the things, for what Abraham were looking for to come to pass. Also, let's see that in Genesis, in Genesis 15, verse 1 also. Genesis 15, verse 1 to 2. Verse 1. Yeah. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am the shield, I am thy shield, and thy exceedingly great reward. You can see, praise the Lord, my beloved brother and sister. You can see, you see who. Now, who tell you because Abraham gave all this thing that he will not be afraid anymore. But you can see that when God appeared to Abraham in a vision, what the first was, don't be afraid. Meaning, Abraham was afraid. Abraham was afraid. God telling him not to fear. Don't, God tell Abraham, don't, don't be afraid. Don't worry. I am your shield. What she like the she is like uh when David is going to battle that thing that the only scar there is she. I am your she, that's I'm your protector, I am your guide, I will always guide you. I will always protect you, I will always guide you, I will always defend you, I will always be there for you. Just not only that, but you so that you will know that I am a great rewarder, a silly rewarder. I will reward you abundantly. Yeah, Abraham, we even say, okay, Lord, if I don't have child, what is the point? Just make my, my, one of my servants who, who, who grow up in my house to be here to my truth, to me. And God told Abraham, no, 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 don't worry. But your hair, it will not be from another person. It will come from your loins. It will come from you. It would come from you. 
So sometimes when people begin to feel happy, maybe there was, as a pastor, you don't think what you as a pastor, you will just manifest so easily. As a pastor, you don't need to do anything. As a pastor, you cannot pass through any hardship. As a pastor, you cannot pass through any temptation. All those things is a lie. This Abraham, the friend of God, is a friend of God. God calling me friend. Is a friend of God. But you can see, even though it was, even though when he take or when he when he partake, he didn't take the 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 the, the only communion that Abraham partake of. It was deep. It's a little bit different than the the one that Israel, the, the children of Israel partake of in in the land of Egypt. Because then they partake with the with the uh, with the uh, ram, roasted ram. But here Abraham took from the from love himself. He himself give Abraham holy communion. He himself give Abraham holy communion with bread and wine. But still Abraham he still lived in fear. That is why when God calls him, tell him don't be afraid. So that's tell us that Abraham was afraid. Because he was afraid that he don't have a head to his throne. He don't have a head, he don't have any son, he don't have any child. So anything you are passing through in life, don't want God bring a prophecy, when God put something into your heart, know that that thing will most surely come to pass. Not only because that is faith that is not come so easily, then you will not say, no, 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 let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go, go back to my house, let me a consult native daughter. The problem is some pastors start the church, if they see for a short, for some time the church is not moving, that people is not flourishing in the church, then we we'll go and try to seek for another help. Before God can give you 10,000 people, God needs to start with you with five people or 10 people. So the way you the way you capable of taking care of those little ones before God can before mm -hmm. God, God can trust you with many. Before God can trust you with many. So when God, when, when your truth, when, when, when your sincerity, when your love, when your commitment, when your love that you speak the, the truth out, when you have 10,000 people in, the, in, in, in your ministry, you cannot go back to start to go and lie to them. You always keep on saying the truth because it's the truth that brings all of them to your ministry. But the problem with the church is these days, most of them, they get those members with lie, with fake prophecy. First prophecy. Then when they continue to, they need to keep the people in slavery so that they can get money to fund the church. That is why they continue. They keep on telling these people lie because they don't want them to free. Because if you if you if you free, it become problem. It become problem to them. So their task, like Egyptian, their taskmaster made the world. The world becomes so strong for them. Today, most of you, your taskmaster are now your pastors. Your taskmaster is not your pastor because sometimes the taskmaster can come, the voice can come in different, different ways. It can come in different, different ways. It can come through your friend, it can come through the pastor. Most of the time, they will control our friend. If most of the people now, it come through the pastor because the pastor begins to feed them with light so that he can just keep it there as a slave. So they will continue slaving them. He will continue drawing from them. He will continue taking their money. He will be rich. They will become more poorer and poorer. And that is not the word of God. So also, let's see. Let's go to the, let's go front also. The same Genesis. Go more front. We'll go to 21. So for you to know that it was not that easy. So for God, for the promise to see it come to pass, it should took a, it should take a time. It don't just happen that minute. It don't just happen that second. Now this Genesis 15. Then let's go to 21 before the promise was fulfilled in in Abraham's life. Before the promise was fulfilled. Genesis 21. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. Praise the Lord. You can see, now the Lord visited Sarah, and the Lord 
he, 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 he do it according as he has said it. He bring it into pass. He bring it to fulfillment. But you can see when God speak to Abraham when he meet Abraham in the vision that was Genesis 15. Now Genesis 21 before the promise is coming to pass. And here now the scripture say when 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 Sarah was pregnant, it was Abraham was 99 years old. Because the other year when he gave back to be 100 years old, he had the child because nine months. So he didn't, he, he started the other year, maybe it was probably in 2017 and 2018 he delivered. It's one year. It didn't come to pass instantly. And when God meets Abraham, Abraham, like that guy, 83 years old. But after 16 years later, before the promise come to pass, after 16 years later, that is how the things that is how the things of God work. It not just come it's, it not just come so easily like that. It will always take time because that time is for you to build, so that you will be so that you your, your mentality so that anything. That is why God will always deal we always dealing with you. That is why who, who, if you come to God you need to come to God as a baby. You submit yourself. You submit to yourself to Almighty God. So before then, it begin to grow you a little by little. It begin to grow you for your character, for your things, everything that you have been doing before. That's why you submit yourself. The things you cannot do by yourself, your character, the kind of thing that can stop, can make many people run from you. Because when we come from the world, we always want, we always have one funny character to one to another. So God will always stop us from those things. But He is the one that is going to take absolute control of it all. We cannot do it by our strength, we cannot do it by our power. We need the grace of God. We need the power of God. That is why we must be perfect in love. It's only love that can make us to walk in the right direction, the way God wants us to walk. Because a lovely man cannot, a man that is full of love cannot raise somebody who's wife. A man that is full of love cannot take somebody's things forcefully. A man that is filled with love, he cannot do evil to his brother. So all these things we should we, we, we should know. So don't don't live in deception. Don't let somebody come to come and deceive you. Don't let it because ah, ah, you, my brother something is wrong with you. You start business with that so so brother. You, you see that brother is moving forward. You you are not your moving forward. This let's go and visit lady daughter. Let's go to this pastor. He will give you this olive oil. Here. Then everything will be good for them. Or let's go. He will give you this band. Everything will be good for them, for you. At the end of the day, this pastor so believe on that band. He doesn't use it. He will say the band will protect you, the sticker will protect you, but he himself is going around with bodyguard. If oil will favor you, he said he will say he will use it, but he is giving you all the oil and he's collecting your money away from you every day, every minute, every second. He's be collecting your own. When you give him, you become he become rich. You will become poorer every day by day. It will take from you, take from this, take from that at the end of the day. But when you see Abraham give time, when, 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 when you are giving to God, and the book of Matthew chapter 25, letting us tell us how we should give to God. Even though the book of Proverbs also tell the same thing, we should look for the destitute, we should look for the stranger, we should look for the poor people around us. When you give to those people, you are giving to God. So you must wait patiently. You must be patient. You must have hope. You must have faith. You must know that your God has speaking it. He will always bring it into fulfillment. That's why you see in, 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 in Genesis chapter uh, 21, in verse 1, what the Lord has spoken, He brings it to fulfillment, He brings it to, to pass as He has said it. So believe in God, my beloved brother and sister. And as you do so, you will see the, 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 the power of God manifested in your life. This is the truth, the word of God. You don't need any deliverance. Any deliverance you need to go is for you just to, to deliver to know the truth. 
you don't need any deliverance you just know to you just need to know the truth when you know the truth the truth will deliver you the truth will set you free because when you know the truth somebody cannot deceive you my beloved brother and sister somebody cannot deceive you and when you want to you when you desire to know god more and more is for you to listen to the word of god for you to read the scripture the scripture says faith coming by hearing hearing what hearing the word of god you continue hearing don't go and listen to law. Me, I still learn from people. I still listen. But I don't listen to Nigeria preacher. Most of them don't listen because why? What they are saying is not giving me any sense. It's not adding anything to me. It don't even make me to know God more and more. They always say maybe enemies after you go and come and go and break coconut, come and kill this, come and do, come and miracle mono do. I don't need all those kind of false teaching. I don't need those kind of false word. What I need is what make me to expose. Just know that God is, is my father. When you complain to God, it's just relationship. It's just relationship. When you complain to him, when you know that you are free to talk to God, you go on your way, you are, you are just communicating. That is why the Bible says, pray with us easy. Pray with us easy. Don't mean to go and hide inside your room. Be speaking it all because more Nigerian Christians, they believe in speaking it all. Ra, 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 bra, 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 bra. That is what makes you a powerful person in the kingdom of God. Or that is what makes you to hear from God. Or that is what God makes you to hear your prayer. Sometimes when you are speaking all those things, you don't even know what it means. It's like a madness. That is all the truth. When you want to speak in tongues, when you speak in tongues in the church, God will always give another person the interpretation to, to interpret what that tongue just means. When you speak it inside the room, that's what the scripture because you speak to God. But today we turn everything around. We made doctrine of art of everything, every good thing that God has created. We make it to become religion. And when we become religion, it becomes a problem. Because religion is to hold your, 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 your mind, to control you. But God has come to give you freedom. That's why the book of John says, I have come so that you might have life. You have it abundantly. God wants you to live. God don't, God don't say be. God don't want you to live as a slave. He wants you to live as a free child. He wants you to live as a, as a deliverer. He wants you to live as a winner. He wants you to live as a champion. But you don't because you want to wear something nice. You don't need to slave or you don't need to trick another person to do that. Just wait upon you, upon God. He said, the gold and silver are mine, says the Lord. I will give it to anyone that I choose. Now, me and you, we are, we are the choosing one. So don't let pastor twist that word for you. So if pastor say, we are the choosing one. It's some people. He said, I will give it to whoever I choose. And the scripture just say, we are the choosing one. So the, the gold and the silver is for all. Say the Lord. It's for us. So wait patient, hope, and believe in God. For us, let's see also, let's see the book of Hebrew. This, this, also this passage, this word also we are quoted by Apostle Paul. Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Just, you, all you need to do, my beloved brother and sister, believe in God. Is freedom nothing you don't trust me? Me, I, me, I'm done. I'm if I want to go to go and sleep, I don't go to bed in my mind that somebody will come attack me or somebody will come or somebody will do me anything. No, when I go there, I when I go to go and sleep, I just go there to go and lie down. And I know that once I lie down, God will be away for me to sleep. No enemy, I cannot be thinking that somebody will come and hurt me. Am I going to hurt somebody also? As I'm not going to kill somebody, I'm not going go to go and take from somebody. I'm not stealing from somebody. I'm not taking somebody something. So why would I think that somebody want to hurt me? Somebody want to kill me? So don't worry. Don't be worried about anything because the vengeance is for God. The vengeance is not for you. It's for God. Judah believe in God. God will not allow things that you cannot take care of fall upon you. Any law that can kill God will not let a light to fall upon you. But also don't be afraid. 
Believe in your Heavenly Father. Believe in your God. Believe the God that set you free. Believe on the Son that, that went to the cross to go and took your place and has given you His righteousness. You are set free, my, my, my people. You are be delivered. You don't need any other title and offer to do these things. You don't need anything. You just need to have hope. You just need to wait patient. You just need to have faith. That is what you need. Just a little faith. Sometimes it might be wave, but it doesn't mean that little faith. It will take you over to your destination. It will take you over to your blessing. It will take you over to your success. So Hebrew chapter 6 verse 1. Where you read? Uh -huh. Hebrews are what? Yes. Sorry. Cease. Go read. Yeah. Hebrews six verse eleven, and we decide that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Praise the Lord, you can see. See, he for all of us to show diligence, to wait patient for the hope. You must wait patient. You must exercise. You must try. Even though sometimes it might look that you cannot move anymore. It can it be like, sometimes it will be like this thing cannot. How can this be? Like the way the, the angel speak to Mary and Mary ask, how can this be? Since I, I, have, I have not known man. So sometimes it may look like that. But you begin to continue to talking with your father. Continue to speak with him. Talk to him about that situation. Talk to him about that problem. And wait patiently. Wait patiently. Wait patiently. Wait for hope. Have hope. Know that it will always be. Don't go and do something else. Don't go and try to pass a shortcut. Verse 12. Verse 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and, and patience inherit the promise praise the lord don't come don't 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 be fed or don't be so slowly like i want to move back no wait patient wait in hope wait in love that when you wait patient that's what make you to inherit the promise of god that is what make you to get the promise of god that is what make you to get that god i've already assigned for you That is why the book of Proverbs says, A man diligent work maketh a way from him for him. Because anything you are doing, when you become diligent of that thing, when you become when you when you do it with patiently, when you do it with hope, when you do it with love, you will see maybe when you do it today is not tomorrow. When you do it again, the thing that you don't add today, maybe you will see it, you will put it again. The thing when you do it next tomorrow, the thing you don't see yesterday and today, you will see. The more you begin to put things all together, the more you become best in that thing. The more you stand. But sometimes our people, we are looking for shortcuts. That is the problem. 
Nobody, because of the rogue message that the Nigeria preacher that has been given to people, anybody don't want to wait anymore. People want just to get it done. That is why somebody will go and kill a 10 years old boy will go and kill his mother because he wants to make money. That is why you go now when you see social media, people want to sell up, people want to sell pint just to make money. Because what is Niger what the Nigeria preacher, what they are giving to people is all about prosperity. They, they, are, they, they tell people there is no need for you to work anymore. One day uh, grace, I mean one day favor is better than 10 years work. Alright, then put it in Nigeria preacher. So the only so when people still they look it as blessing. When people defraud one another, they look it as blessing. Because the message of hope is not there anymore. The message of love is not there anymore. Everybody wants to get something out of nothing. People want to wake up to receive miracle money. Money you don't go for. You are a thief for believing that kind of a thing. So that is why when you want to scam people, you end up them with also them will scam you. Because you need free something. You don't want to go for anything. That is why you want to meet a pastor. Also, the pastor himself is a bigger for one night. Because the, the easiest way for people to deceive people is just through God. When people measure God, the people will think that this is free. And that is why today you see the Christian, I'm not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you here, but the truth of, of, of the matter, most of the Christian, they become so, like they become so foolish that they don't even think, they don't even think one, one, one minute, they don't even use their head. They don't even use their head anymore. If anybody before you can, there's a passage in a book of in a book of art when they when, when the apostle Paul preached to these people, they will go back, go and read the scripture by scripture, word by word, come back if just to see if what he has said to them, if it is true or lie. You need that's why Jesus Christ said, test all the spirit. By the fruit, you shall know them. Don't tie your eyes. Say let God with judge. They say God said they, they, they say God said they don't judge. So my my beloved brother and sister, wait patiently. Have hope. Wait in love. Anything you anything God that God lay in your heart, know that God has laid that thing in your heart. He will always bring that thing into fulfillment. He will always bring it into pass. You don't need any tithe. You don't need any offering. If you want to bless anybody, you want to give to God, God has already told you the way to give to him. Book of Matthew 25. He said, when you give to the poor, you will give to me. When you give to the need, you give to me. When you give to the stranger, the poor, the widow, the people that has been challenged in the society, the cripple, and when you give to them, when you go to go and visit the people in the hospital, people in the prison yard, the people cannot fight for them, for their self. You fed them, you have already given unto me. We need, and the most, the precious gift that God wants you to give to him is yourself. God is looking for your heart. That is only what God can walk through. Through your heart. When you surrender your heart to God, through that your heart that you are giving to God, through that God can build your character. God can build your character for by you giving your heart to Him. That is what God needs for you, not your money. God did not have any pleasure with sacrifice anymore. What God needs is yourself, your heart. Surrender your heart unto God. Give your heart to Him for Him to use. Because through you, God will pass a message. Through you, God will bless somebody. Through you, God will deliver somebody. God needs you by yourself. He needs your heart. He needs, that is what, why that is what the scriptures say, called agape love. That is what God needs. Not transactional uh, love or uh, relationship love. That if you, like, if you love me, I will love you back. If you hate me, I will hate you back. That is not what God is looking for. God need, God wants you to love everybody equal. The way you see the other one, the way you see your brother, the way you see yourself, the way you see anybody you come across. You come in contact with the same way you see all of them. Praise the Lord, somebody. So we, we, let's go to the last passage of today, which is the book of Exodus. Exodus 23. Let's just go and read from 
from 25 and 26 let us use this passage also to understand the certain thing words from god because when you talk about god my beloved brands when i talk about god like this my spirit is always free my spirit is always free i'm no there is no there is um, no no bondage no no nothing can hold me bondage anymore nobody can tell me negative word anymore all of us we we have one challenge one way or the other the challenge in, in our said that we cannot take care of is only god apostle but all their prophets have their own challenges i must introduce you to god i must i must not tell you the way you, how you should live your life so god by himself will tell you how you should live your life the 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 the, the direction the pattern god wants you to live your life he will tell you also i cannot tell you that this how you should do it this about all what i will introduce to you i will introduce you to 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 god i will introduce you to christ himself so he said come you with your character come just the way you are don't try to pretend the problem with Christians is that they, they want to try to pretend to God. Don't try to pretend. Just come the way you are. If you are a thief, come the way you are. Apostle Paul was a killer. That is how God see him, rescue him. There was a man in my church or son, uh, 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 the man in, in my church, one white man there. He said before he, he used to be a drunker. One day he, 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 he went uh, he went drunk and he collapsed. Then they rushed him to hospital. He said he didn't, he didn't even know. But in that dream, when he was in the in the coma, then he found himself a place and somebody standing on the door telling him to go back. And he go back. When he go back, he wake up. He didn't even know who speak to him. Then after some years later, when he become a Christian, somebody preach about Jesus Christ. Our pastor telling about Jesus Christ. Then he now he now record that oh, is this Christ? Is the one that saved me? That tell me to go back there. There is it is not my time yet. So God can save anybody want to save. God knows the way to save his children. It's not for me and you to decide for God. How God do his thing. He's our father. He knows how to do his thing. So you all keep on believing in him. So Exodus 23. Verse 25. Exodus 23, 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee 26 there shall no cast thy young nor be barren in the land and numbers of thy days i will fulfill praise the lord now you can see god say if you serve me i will bless you I will multiply you. I will take sickness away from you. So sometimes I will serve God. Sometimes we think so we think by going to church or as a pastor is serving God. Or because I'm going to church, I'm serving God. Sometimes you might just be going to church and you will be serving your pastor. Pastor is the most of the pastors, they are serving their stomach. They are not serving God. How do you serve God? By serving people, by seeing the need of your brother. Attend to that need by seeing the need of your sister. Attend to that need. It's not by going to church from Monday to Sunday. At the end of the day, you are you are wicked than just somebody. Somebody in the street is even more better than you. So a Christian today, when a deeper life is coming out from church and he see redeem, he will not carry him, carry him or her with his car because he's not my church member. You are not serving God. So we so people they are serving God because what they want to get from God. So people they are serving God because they want God to help them to solve their problem. So they don't just come to God because they love God. No. So God is telling you, yes, serve me. When you serve me, I will bless you. When you serve me, your your you, your, your children will not will, will not fall sick. Your children will not die young. Just serve me. I will fulfill the day, your days. Just serve me, believe in me, trust me. Surrender to God. Just serve God. That is what God needs from you. Don't go and serve your pastor thinking you are serving God. Most of the time, people serve their pastor thinking you are serve, they are serving God. No. All those deals we have in Nigeria, there's no one serving God. They are just serving their pocket. 
they are serving their stomach. That is why what, what is driving them is, they are, is what they are going to get. That is why you hear today, this one say, I'm, I'm the one that building the last church in Africa. And somebody that is collecting that money from, some people that is donating that money into him, they cannot feed themselves three times in a day. They cannot eat complete, complete square meal. Some of them cannot send their children to school. And you are riding private jet. And you are riding a, 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 a big car. You are living a, in, a, in, a, in, in a big home. You are not serving God. You are just being Lord over the people. You are just being using them because of their ignorance. You become their slave master. Because that is why they don't want you to get out. And why they don't want you to leave. What you always do, go and bring some passage in the whole testament. Use it to slave you. But you see every word I'm be reading, I'm just be reading whole testament to you. When God says, serve me. So serve God, my beloved brother and sister. Serve God. Read your scripture. Know the way God says you should serve him. Attend to the need of your brother and your sister. Love one another. The scripture says, if you say you love me and you hate your brother, you are a liar. How you say you love me? You cannot, you cannot see God. You say you love me. Your brother that you can see right now, you don't love him. You want him dead. You wishing him dead. You are just saying, if I can break your head, if I can kill you now, and you say you love God, then the, on Sunday you go and stand in the front of church and you begin to sing. On your Sunday you go and take microphone, you begin to, you begin to prophesy, begin to say lie. When you pass the people, the needy, the people that you're supposed to serve, the people that you're supposed to help, the people that are supposed to bless. That's why God gave you the blessing for the first time. So my beloved brothers and serve God. Believe in God. Praise the Lord somebody. Let's drop down. Yeah, verse 29 and 30. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beds of the field multiply against thee. Praise the Lord. Now you see, God said, I will not drive them out just for one year. I will drive them out little by little. So that when I drive them out little by little, so if I drive them out once, the land becomes desolate. The land becomes desolate. The, the, the problem that is God is telling you that the sickness, He cannot just drive them out once. It will be taking care of them a little by little. A little by little, you will be seeing improvement in that sickness. You will be seeing improvement in that situation. You will be seeing improvement. In your life, in that business, you will be seeing improvement a little by little. Because if God drive them once out of the land, one the land becomes desolate, become problem for you. The problem become multiply. The problem will become multiply. So God said, "I will take care of it a little by little. I will do it daily. I will do it very slow." I will do it slowly and I will do it at the, at the end of the day. It will become perfect for you. It will become the right time for you to possess the land. Verse 30. Verse 30. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Praise the Lord. You see, my beloved brother and sister, the God is so wise. God is so lovely and God is too kind. He said, I will drive them with a little by little. All things you will become multiplied. All things you are strong. Here is land, but today can be sickness. Today can be challenge of, uh, 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 of life. Today can be, your, can be your business is going down. Today can be one, one thing or the other. But God is telling you that I will not just do it, just hurry. Because if He if God wants to bless you with a million dollars and He give you that million dollars instantly, tomorrow you will come back, you will become a beggar again. That money can cost your life. That money can cause destruction for you. So many of us, we have passed that stage before. 
we make money when we are young. Some rough, some money come at the age of 20. So sometimes, what will we do with that money? I'm, me, I'm receiving that kind of money before. At the end of the day, you go club. You just go club. Maybe you drink some champagne, some anything. You buy some clothes. At the end of the day, the money is gone. Tomorrow, today, you can have a 2,000, 3,000 euro. And the other two days, time, you, you start begging for somebody to buy one bottle of beer. That is where God said, I will not just do it just instantly. I will begin, I will start to do it a little by little. Or thing, uh, you are prepared to take it, to take charge. Or thing, even though you open a church now, you have a five people or ten people. God know what he's doing with you. Because he, God wants you to, to be fit so that you can control the people. So that you can tell them, it's not just you can control the people, so that you can lead the people. You can tell them truth. You can tell the truth. So my beloved brother and sister, you can see this is the word of God. This is not a word of man. It's so clear and it's so easy for anybody to know. When you believe with God, there's nothing God cannot do. When you trust in God, there's no situation God cannot take care of. That situation is not bigger than God. That problem is not, is not bigger than God. You don't need to look for any shortcut. You don't need to look for any, any way. You just need to believe in God. He said the Abraham made with the king of Selah. The king of Selah made the king of holiness. The king of complete. All and all. The, the king of complete. God is the, is the God of complete. The king of complete. Everything. God has made you in, in, in a such a way that Everything God put everything in the right direction. God make everything more in perfect way before He created you. You see that passage, and I say so that you will not become barren in the land. If you serve Him, you will not be, you will not become barren in the land. They never say you will be not become miscarriage in the land because sometimes God say He, he has already make you be, you will not become barren. Sometimes you can be miscarried as a woman. Sometimes it might delay before it comes. That is where people run to all those celestial uh, babala wars. That is where all those people taking advantage, sleeping with people's wives. Because, we, because women need the fruit of the womb. Because they don't want to be patient, waiting for God. It will start to seek help for different people. Before you know, you go and meet Allah, Dura, or Celestia. They will say, Holy Spirit will come and visit you. Then they will be sleeping with people's wives. At the end of the day, when the child can start to misbehave, his mother will not tell his father where he get the child from. When you don't wait, when you don't wait upon God, you will, you they, if you go and get it in a short call, it will bring disaster. It will bring problem. God never say you will never become miscarriage. He said, but you will never become barren in the land. Sometimes miscarriage can come. Sometimes it might be delayed. You don't say that because it's telling that you not become buried that sometimes if you don't marry today and the next month, the next year, one year, you don't get pregnant that God has forget everything about you because somebody has get married today, the other month is being pregnant, meaning you need to do something. You don't need to do anything, you just need to continue praising God, believing in God. Some um, um, uh, mother, uh, the, the woman that gave birth to Samuel, he, he gave birth to Samuel because he hoped upon God. But when Samuel comes, Samuel become a winner. He become a winner. He become a champion. He become a deliverer. Sometimes when 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 something keep on like that, when it delay before it come, but if it come, it will become the best. So always wait for God's time. Always wait for God's time. Don't do it in your own time. Don't be rushed. Wait patiently. So my beloved brother and sister, I know the one God has already given me to say today, and I've said it, and I know by the grace of God, this message today will bless somebody. This message will give somebody understanding, and this message will open somebody's eye to see the truth, so that it's true, will make you free. So my beloved brother and sister, as I have said before, believe in God. Trust in Him. 
Just trust in him. If you are never making this God as your personal Lord and Savior, make him your personal Lord and Savior. Anything you are doing, any kind of human being you are, you cannot change yourself, but God can change you. He know the way to do it. He know the way to do it. God always use the, the weakest thing to confound the strong thing. The people that the that the, 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 the right of God can make that person will bring that person and it will make him a somebody. God know how to do it. Power is knowledge. When God, God know how to give you everything. He know how to give you that knowledge. He know how to give you that power. They know how to give you that knowledge. When you have that power, you use it to worship God. You use it anytime you do help for, to somebody, anytime you bless somebody, the, the, the praise will always go back to God. It will always be rejected. Let, let me see your work. Your good work so that he will give your heavenly father glory. They will praise his name. So my beloved brother and sister, don't go seeking for one person to help you out. Don't go to go and say, this is that, that is that, this is this, this is this. Today, is this, this one is more stronger. Tomorrow, this one is more stronger. Wait for God. Believe in God. Praise him. Worship him. Anything you need to say to him, anything you need to, any question. If you need to pour out your heart, pour out your heart to him. If you need to cry to him, cry. If you need to shout, God don't care. He knows that maybe it's your pain that makes you to shout. He will always meet you and he will always make your life become so shy. At the end of the day, you will say, God, I am sorry for complaining. I am sorry for shouting. It's your, your father. Don't look at God as your enemy. Don't look at God as God is living far one place and is you are living in another place that he has some medium men to know. Only the visa you need to God is our Lord Jesus Christ. So my beloved brother and sister, by the grace of God, I will see you again by Wednesday or Saturday. So my beloved brother and sister, stay blessed and remain blessed. Know that God has already blessed you. Know that God has already delivered you. Know God has already taken strife for you just to be here. Know that God has paid everything you need in your life. It's finished work. God has already done it for you. When God go to your future, He do the work. After when God finish the work and He put you, He just put you. So okay, now you go. That is why we say when you rest, that is why Hebrew chapter 4 says when you rest in God, the work has already been finished. When he finish it, he puts you to start. So my beloved brother and sister, believe in this God. Trust in him. Make this God your personal Lord and Savior. And as you do that, you will never regret it. You will see only the deliverer you need is for you just to know the truth. Because when you know the truth, the truth, surely it will make you free and it will set you free. So my beloved brother and sister, stay blessed and remain blessed. I love you until next week. I'll come your way again. Bye-bye.